is equal to 1. All right, so the volume was off. The first part of that will be quiet. Now we're going. So it's going to be 90 degrees, but again, you're going to find you do this often. You solve between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi because that's what you're used to. Then afterwards, you go and check your question. It says solve first over that domain. So actually, 90 isn't my answer. What would my answer be between negative 360 and 0? What would be coterminal with 90? Negative 270 degrees. Then write the general solution. So I'll write the general solution over here. Since we're in degrees, our general solution will be take your answer, and it doesn't matter if you use 90 degrees or negative 270, 90 degrees plus, now we don't add 2k pi because we're dealing with degrees, we add 360 degrees times k to get all of our coterminal angles with 90. Yes? Yeah, this part here, then write the general solution. So it says first solve between negative 360 and 60, and then do the general solution. So part A reviewed our general solution a little bit. It reviewed our unit circle and coterminal angles. Part B, cos 3x equals negative 1. I gave a special name. I gave a special name to this type of question. Do you remember what this one was called? Multi-revolution. Multi so sometimes we give special names to them so that if you can remember the special name, chances are you remember, like, you remember how to do it. So this is a multi-revolution question. What did we do with multi-revolution questions? Well, it says we want to solve the general solution and list them between negative 2 pi and 0. How did we solve multi-revolution questions normally? Well, we would say if I wanted to solve, normally we would solve between 0 and 2 pi. If 1x is between 0 and 2 pi, then 3x's was between 0 and 6 pi. So you could do that and solve it normally and then find coterminal angles afterwards. Okay? If I solve this normally, when is cos equal to negative 1? <coughs> At pi, right? That's the first time around. What about the second time around? 3 pi. What about the third time around? What's coterminal? 5 pi. So those would be the answers for 3x between 0 and 6 pi. And then solving for x, divide each of them by 3. And you'd get pi over 3, pi, and 5 pi over 3. Yes? We got so many answers because our answers were in two quadrants, like quadrant two and quadrant three. Because this is an axis family, there's only one answer between zero and two pi. That's why we got less answers this time. So these, what we got here, are answers between zero and two pi. What does this question ask us for? It asks us for the general solution, and it asks us for the answers between negative 2 pi and 0. So from here, once you've got your answers between 0 and 2 pi, could you write your general solution? Yes. 
your general solution will be all your answers between 0 and 2 pi. And since we're dealing in radians, plus 2k pi. Could we do our answers between negative 2 pi and 0 now? Yes. What's coterminal with pi over 3? Negative 5 pi over 3. What's coterminal with pi? negative pi. And what's coterminal with 5 pi over 3? Negative pi over 3. So if I think about my unit circle, and I have pi over 3, which would be here, pi, which would be there, and 5 pi over 3, which would be there. If I draw those angles in, there's that one, there's that one, there's that one. I want to find that negative angle. What I like to do when I think about that is I know it's going to be part of the pi over 3 family. I know it's going to be negative. And can you see, going in the negative direction, I've gone to the fourth negative quadrant. So that's how I know it's negative 5 pi over 3. Because 5 pi over 3 is my quadrant 4 pi over 3 family, and I'm going in the negative direction. Right? Does it make sense that this one is pi? And then the negative one would be negative pi. Because it's halfway around in the negative direction as well. And 5 pi over 3 is my pi over 3 in quadrant 4, but when I go in the negative direction, it's like the first negative quadrant. Quadrant 4 is the first negative quadrant. And so it becomes negative pi over 3. So I find, for me, thinking about the quadrants in the negative direction is really helpful for figuring out what things are coterminal with. OK, we did the general solution here by first finding between 0 and 2 pi and adding 2k pi. Do you want a review of the other general solution method? Okay, so the, so the two general solution methods just change the order in which you do things. The first general solution method, you solved multi-revolution first between 0 and 2 pi, and then did the general solution. In the other general solution method, you can do general solution first. And I'm just going to put, in this case, it's for 3x. Then deal with the multi-revolution. So we still have cos 3x equals 1. Oh, sorry, cos 3x equals negative 1. So if you were doing your general solution first, the only place that cos equals negative 1 is at pi. So you'd start with pi and add 2k pi. Where k is an integer. That's your general solution. If it was just a theta, you would be done. You only have one answer and write all the coterminal angles. Then deal with the multi-revolution. Divide everything by 3. Now, when we get an answer like this, so here's our one general solution. 
pi over 3 plus 2k pi over 3. And here was our other general solution where we had three answers plus 2k pi. So let's get a little bit of an understanding of what each of these answers mean. And then I'll get to your question. You want to go back down first and write it down? No. If it asks a general solution, you get to choose. Okay? Okay, good? So first of all, I want to think about this general solution. The pi over 3 plus 2k pi, pi plus 2k pi, and 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And we're going to look at the little diagram that we have because it's really helpful. What this first one is, pi over 3 plus 2k pi, that includes pi over 3, 7 pi over 3, 13 pi over 3, 19 pi over 3, anything that ends where that blue line is forever, as many times around as you'd like. Everything coterminal with that blue line. The pi plus 2k pi does everything coterminal with the purple line forever. It would have pi, then it would have 3 pi, then it would have 5 pi, then it would have 7 pi, and the negative ones as well. And the 5 pi over 3, I have one left that's green, would have everything coterminal with 5 pi over 3 forever. So it's written in three different steps. One step to find the blue line and everything coterminal with that. One step for the purple and everything coterminal with that. And one step for the green and everything coterminal with that. Now, when we think about what does pi over 3 plus 2k pi divided by 3 mean forever? Well, pi over 3 would be starting at the blue line, but instead of adding 2 pi, now we're only going a third of the way around. Can you see if you went a third of the way around, you'd get to the purple? Then you would get to the green, then back to the blue, then to the purple, then the green, then the blue, then the purple, then the green. And if you kept doing that forever, you would get all of the coterminal ones with the blue, all of the coterminal ones with the purple, and all of the coterminal ones with the green. So for the multi revolution general solution, you can either A, solve first between 0 and 2 pi and add 2k pi to all of them. So then you're doing multi-revolution first, general solution second. Or what we did here is we did the general solution first and then dealt with the multi-revolution. If you do this method, your answer will always be shorter and smaller because what you're adding, the 2k pi, will get divided as well. All right, questions for practice. 4, 8, and 9. 